right, everybody, and welcome back to Dog Show Tips and Canine Chronicles Coach's Corner with George Austin. Coach's Corner with Will Alexander and George Austin. Brought to you by Pro Plan and Canine Chronicles. Well, George, how are you today? I am not too bad for an old person. <laughs> <laughs> you said that last time. <laughs> it, it, well, it takes us a little longer to get started than you young whippersnappers. Oh, you know, I so. like being a young whippersnapper. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we had, we've already started to get some questions coming in. We have. And one question, which we hear a lot, is... This lady has a warmer on her that paces, and she can't get him out of the pace. And then he, some days he paces, some days he doesn't pace. Well, first of all, warmer honors. The first of all, the pace is a very, very relaxing gait for a dog, where a trot is more energetic or it takes more uh right. energy to do in my class i always tell them that it's a lazy way of getting well it, right it's it makes a dog lazy i mean a dog is lazy and warm honors i showed a lot of them are very very lazy <laughs> <laughs> and and they like to and they also the breed also likes to mess you up in the ring they they have a habit of doing that so what we want to do is the best way to get a dog to stop pacing is to throw them off balance because the pace is not a well-balanced gait like a trot is. Right. Uh, a pace is good for straightaway, but a pace is not good for going around corners or or the dog has to go into a trot to become any uh, to be agile so what you do um and we've always i have always taught not to do a courtesy turn but in this time we're going to call it a, a control turn and when the judge gets finished examining the dog and you start to go to gate the dog instead of just going straight down and back you do a courtesy turn in front of the judge when you are three quarters of around the circle turning your dog and the dog is sideways to the direction you want to go you pull the dog in the direction you want to gate that will trip the dog over the right front foot, throw him off balance, and he will immediately go into a trot guarantee every single time. Now, <clears throat> that's for the individual gait. However, when the judge says, let's take them around the ring together, you can't you don't want to do a courtesy turn right you're going to be standing if you do a courtesy turn now people say you know that person is stupid get going and, get going you know, that's that's not nice to be called stupid <laughs> <No>. <laughs> which, which i have been called before so what you do is while you're fixing the lead whether it's a big dog on the ground or a dog you've just taken off the table you push the dog so he is sideways to the direction you're going to go in. And this is a very subtle move. Nobody will even see you do this. It'll, you can even make it look like the dog is backing off a little bit from your lead or whatever. And then when you start, you pull the, he's sideways. You pull him in the direction you want to go. He trips over that right front leg. Bingo. He's, he's out of it. It, and it works every single time. It's something you practice at home so that it, you make it smooth and nobody sees what you're doing. Yeah, that's good advice. 
and I, I've I've done that plenty of times. So I believe uh, years ago, I think I got a phone call from a young fellow from Canada that asked me about that same situation. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder uh, who that guy was. I don't know who that guy was. There's a, you know, there's this guy from Canada who used to call me all the time and bug the hell out of me. So. <laughs> okay. There was something else you wanted to talk about. Yes, sir. This is the main, I, I this is going to be a combination of three and we're going to do it really, really quick. Stand, sit back a bit, George. I, I can only, there we go. Is that better? Yep. Yep. You look like okay. Wilson from that TV show for a second. So keep stay uh, right oh, there. <laughs> oh, okay. The, um, first of all, the perfect handle should be invisible. Absolutely invisible. However, people, it's impossible for you to be invisible. As I say, well, how can you do that? It hasn't got to do with you're physically invisible. You never want the judge to see what you are doing. Your movements and what you are doing to the dog to make him look better is totally invisible. Three of the greatest of all time. In, in my opinion, one was Phil Marsh. He showed a lot of Dobermans and boxers, and you never saw him set a foot in any dog he ever showed, and you never saw anything that he did. You would say, my God, the dogs, all his dogs always did. The other one is a, a person is one of the most... Uh, uh, and he's a large man, Bob Forsyth. You never saw Bob Forsyth do anything. You never saw him do anything. And he's a large man, but he was so graceful. And uh, and also Joe Gregory. Joe Gregory was the same. I, uh, I, I saw him a lot in, in the boxer ring. I happened to comment on those three because they were great boxer handlers. And, um, but you have to be an invisible. The other thing, then we go into, you never try to hide a fault. Judges are too smart. If you think that you're going to hide uh, a fault on a, I'm trying to think of a judge. Name, name me a, a judge. Marianne Alston. Okay. <laughs> if, if you think for a moment you're going to hide a fault on of your dog to Marianne Alston, you have better uh, go back, go to start showing cats because it, it ain't going to work. Most, the biggest mistake is people go and set their dogs up. And let's say they have a bad hindquarter and they keep looking at it and going back and fixing it and going back and fixing it. And all this does is bring attention to the dog's hindquarter, which is, is a fault. A good handler will set that hindquarter up once, leave it alone, and then go and go to another part of the dog and um There were several, there were a lot of times when I would do that, and let's say I had a dog with a bad hind quarter, and I would go and I'd sort of work on the front end of the dog and whatever, and the judge would tell me after he put me up, he would say, you know, you're all worried about your dog's front. It looks pretty good. <laughs> Wouldn't mention anything about the hind quarter that was bad. Exactly. When I I, I teach that in my class too, and it's probably because of you, but. It, you just draw attention to it. If I'm standing out in the center of the ring and you're continuously setting okay. up your dog's butt end, I'm thinking there's something wrong back there. Okay, now, uh, to go back to the dog, uh, the, the perfect handler is invisible. There's, some, there's a lot of handlers out there today that are always jumping around their dog. They're jumping around, moving here, moving there, moving here. If you were standing, you've probably heard somebody say, 
hey, look at that handler. He's pretty good. Look at him work. If you are looking at him working, he is not a good handler. He's you should say, to himself. Wait, but when you stand there and himself. you say, that dog is absolutely beautiful. He's doing it all by himself. Don't you believe it? But that's a good handler. Yeah. Uh, now, let's say you are showing, you, you don't want the judge to see your dog's hindquarter. How do you show off the front or how do you show off the head? There's a lot of wannabe handlers. They run their hands all over the dog. And they run their hands over the head or the top line or the hind quarter or the front end. And we used to call this hand jive. You, we, <laughs> you don't want to do hand jive on a dog because all you're doing is saying to the judge, hey, stupid, look at this. Believe it or not, judges don't like to be called stupid. They don't. Uh, you know, that is that is not good. Now. If you're walking down the street and you see somebody staring up in the sky, what are you going to do? You're going to look up. You're going to look and see what they're looking at. Right. Do you know why? Because the human being is a very curious animal. And they don't want anybody to see something that they don't see. So what you do is, let's say you want to show off your dog's neck and shoulder. Your dog has a bad hind quarter. You set the hind quarter up first, leave it alone, don't even go near it, and look at, stare at the neck and shoulder of your dog. The judge's eyes will automatically follow where your eyes are. Now, we can take this into professional sports. Right now, we're in the middle of the national uh, of the NFL playoffs. How many times have you heard uh, that the defensive back was reading the quarterback's eyes and then made an interception? Same idea yep. is use your eyes to show off your dog. It's called subtle presentation. The judge will never know that you were doing it. Nobody will know that you're doing it unless they're, you know, smart. You get the two unless of us. They're smart. <laughs> no, but, it, you know, the two of us can sit there and we can watch somebody go out there and, and we know what they're doing, you know. But don't go jumping around. I, I mean, I see pictures of people, they got their dogs set up and they look like they're going to try to jump on top of their dogs and whatever. And <laughs> you, you, they're showing themselves off and and you you have to be invisible. Yeah, you're that, not invisible. That is my lesson for the day. And uh, I did it in uh, 11 minutes. You did. Excellent, George. Well, it's good to catch up as usual. Hopefully keep those letters coming in, everybody. And uh, what, 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 is there something finally you want to say, George? One more thing I'd like to say. Just remember, dogs are folks. There you have it. You're on Coach's Corner. Dogs are folks. Well, there ends another fast-paced episode of Coach's Corner with George Austin. If you want to send George any any questions, send it to dogshowtips at gmail.com with the caption Coach's Corner. See you next time.